So welcome to the last part of today's lecture on connected to the Gram-Schmidt process. So we've just talked about what an orthogonal and orthonormal basis is, and now I want to kind of explain why we might be interested in these bases. So just recall from one of the last lectures that once you have a basis for Rn, you can write every vector uniquely in terms of that basis. So that means that there are unique constants C1 through Cn that when you multiply by the first base element plus C2 times the second basis element and so on, you get x. So the Cis connected with the Bis give you a way of building your vector x, and it's the only way to build that vector x using the Bis. And the B coordinate of x, of course, captures that information. Right? It captures all of these scalars that you need to build the vector x. And we talked a little bit about this last class, is that it can actually be lots of work to find the, the b coordinate of x. Because if you're given an arbitrary basis, you're basically having to solve a system of linear equations. And depending upon the size of your system of linear equations, that can be a lot of work. Imagine a vector uh, a basis for Rn that had 10,000 elements. However, the payoff for using orthogonal and orthonormal bases comes in the next theorem, which says that you don't need to set up a matrix and solve it. You can actually use uh, dot products and the norm in order to compute things. Okay, so let me be more precise here. Let's say you have a basis for Rn, and somebody tells you this is actually an orthogonal uh, basis. Then for every x in Rn, you can write your x in terms of your basis as follows. So x is equal to x dotted with b1 divided by the length of b1 squared times the vector b1. So this is just a number, and that's what you're scaling the vector b1 by. And then we repeat for b2. So x dotted with b2 then you take the norm of b2 squared, and then you multiply it by the vector b2, and so on. So we have x dotted with bn all over bn squared, and then the vector bn. So here, I'm finding all of those coefficients that I needed for, uh, when I'm talking about the b coordinate. So here's kind of the payoff that if you're looking for the coordinate of x with respect to your basis s, if it's orthogonal, it's simply all of these numbers, right? We have x dotted with b1 divided by the length of b1 squared. And I'm kind of running out of room here, so hopefully you can see what I'm doing. Uh, so th these numbers right here actually tell me the b-coordinate of my vector x with respect to my orthogonal uh, basis. Now, an orthonormal basis is also, orthog is, uh, is also orthogonal, so basically the same formula uh, uh, applies, but we even get extra information. Because each of these vectors are coming from an orthonormal set, they all have length 1, so all of these denominators are actually 1. So for then for all x in Rn, we can write x as x dotted with b1 times the vector b1 plus x dotted with the vector b2 times the vector b2 and so on, all the way down to the vector x dotted with the vector bn times the vector bn. And then it's actually relatively easy to write the, uh, the I guess in this case, s coordinate of x because I'm using s for my basis. And this is simply x dotted with b1 all the way down to x dotted with bn. So we don't actually need to find a system of equations and solve it. We can actually just use the dot product with my basis once I know that it's orthogonal. So I think I've written that at the bottom here. Orthogonal and orthonormal bases are nice bases. And one of the reasons is once you have such a thing, you can quickly find the, uh, the B coordinate of X uh, using dot products and the norms without using a system of linear equations. 
So I thought I would just do one example of this process. I have two vectors here, and I claim that this is an orthogonal basis for R2. And you should check. There's two things to check. First, you have to check that it's orthogonal, and then you also have to check that it's a basis. But let's say I wanted to find the B coordinate of 2, 3 with respect to this basis. Well, I just use the formula, all right? So I would need to do the vector 2, 3 dotted with 1, 1. And I need to divide by the length of the first vector. So 1 squared, 1 squared. I take the square root, and then I square it times the first vector. And then I need to do 2, 3 dotted with the second vector, 1, negative 1. And I have to divide it by the length of the second vector squared. And then I need to times it by that vector, 1, negative 1. So let's clean this all up. The numerator here is 5. And downstairs, I have a square root and a square. They cancel. Here, I'll put that in parentheses so you can see that a bit easier. Uh, so this just gives me 2, 1, 1. And here I will have upstairs, I'll have 2 minus 3. So I'll have minus 1 upstairs. And downstairs, I'll have 2. 1, negative 1. So this implies that the B coordinate of 2, 3 is 5 halves, negative 1 half. Those are the coefficients that I'm finding right there. Okay, so there are a bunch of things that we've learned today. We learned about the dot products, we learned about the norm, we learned about orthogonality, we learned about ortho orthogonal and orthonormal sets of bases. So a lot of kind of new things that we uh, learned in today's class. And just to kind of give you a preview for next class, because we, we've talked about the importance of orthogonal sets and orthonormal sets, but we haven't actually talked about constructing them. So next time, making orthogonal sets and bases. And that is what the Gram-Schmidt process is going to tell us how to do. So that ends lecture 24, and I'll see you in lecture 25 when we finish up this topic on the Gram-Schmidt process.